Coming up, a single snapshot of Ipswich Heritage Places, changes to the venue building design, four new leases for council-owned commercial property, get ready for storms and bushfires, sports awards finalists announced, and there's still time to nominate for Ipswich's Australia Day Awards. Mayor Teresa Harding joins the show. It's Sunday, September 17, 2023, and I'm Alan Roebuck. Welcome to Ipswich Today, which acknowledges the traditional custodians of the land on which it is produced and pays respects to elders past, present and emerging. This podcast is supported by Kinetics, people-powered web hosting trusted by Australian businesses since 1999. The ordinary meeting of Ipswich City Council was held a week earlier this month on the 14th of September and as per usual, the Mayor joins me after those meetings. Thanks for joining Ipswich today, Mayor Harding. Oh, thank you, Alan, and thank you to listeners. The meeting started off with a bit of a sad note, the condolence motion for Jim Shapcott. Yeah, look, some of your listeners may not have heard of him, but Jim Shapcott is an Ipswich local and he uh, actually started the national organisation Wounded Heroes Australia and he passed away recently. So Wounded Heroes is around Australia but obviously its headquarters is here in Bundamba and many many people know the op shop there and the uh, Jim's Cafe which is a great drop-in centre for people. So I thought it was only appropriate to do a condolence motion for a man that's doing had, has done so much and will in the future do so much to help veterans. Let's move on to the committee reports presented to the council meeting. Firstly, from the Growth, Infrastructure and Waste Committee, item one was council's approach to heritage. Now, Ipswich continues to have a strong record of preserving built and natural heritage. Why was this report prepared for a council meeting? Look, Ipswich City Council has always been quite ahead of other councils back in the 90s when it set up its heritage protections. I was just – I asked for this report to come forward because I could see that there were heritage matters, cultural heritage and built heritage throughout our organisation, but it was probably not working together. So I just wanted a snapshot. So you'll see the report's called an overview. Um, so I think it gives a really good snapshot of what's happening in different parts of our organisation, and I hope to bring forward a heritage plan in the future. Item seven, a development application recommendation under delegation. Uh, Another set of changes for the venue building design. Why is this being changed again? Yeah, the venue building is the building that will have the Hoyts as well as about eight other um, outlets, retail and dining entertainment um, outlets in there as well. So we've made a few changes. One is we've widened the um, entrance on the Nicholas Street precinct side. We've also made the the glass um, ceiling in that atrium area a bit smaller as well. So all things that required um, a minor change as well. And for council, because basically council's assessing itself, it always goes through an independent process. So it was just very important that we do that in a very transparent way. From the Environment and Sustainability Committee, Healthy Land and Water Network membership. I don't think uh, the the wider population knows what council does here. Why is council a member of that organisation? Um, look, I think when I first came to council, we called for a report on our, our rivers and it's something like about 16 organisations do with about 18 different laws and regulations when it comes to river health. Um, so Healthy Land and Water assist us with that. Uh, we've just done a, an, an extension by one year. We noticed out of the SEQ city deals, we've negotiated with the other two levels of government for a resilient rivers initiative that's been going on for some time. Um, so we're quite keen to expand that initiative. So we'll see how that works in the future with Healthy Land and Water. Item five, Get Ready Week. Now, when I hear of Get Ready Week, I think of storms and flooding. I guess that's because we've had so many in the last decade or so. Uh, We've had a couple of early thunderstorms, but bushfires this year are also a concern. Yeah, Alan, the the main concern is bushfire. We've had a lot of wet seasons, so there's a lot of fuel for fire. Um, Council's been doing a lot of um, hazard burning. Uh, We're quite fortunate we don't have any national parks in Ipswich. All our natural areas are uh, council conservation areas, so we've been working with landowners, but also making sure that we have that hazard burn in our own areas as well. And can I just suggest to people that, um, you know, have a plan. It's really important to prepare for an emergency, have an evacuation kit, um, and on council's Get Ready site you'll see lots of uh, ways and templates to to plan for a bushfire or any natural disaster. Mm, I think that's great advice because we don't want to be sitting around thinking that'll never happen to me because that's when you really get caught out. 
You do. And it's really important to you to listen out to um, actually radio um, or the internet to see what's happening as well. But also the Ipswich's uh, disaster dashboard also has the latest updates on bushfires and any other natural disaster as well. And Alan, one more thing. On Saturday afternoon, the Ipswich City SES unit received a statewide award. They received the Assistant Commissioner Shield for Operational Response of the Year. And that's due to their work when they conducted that search for 17 days at the end of the year and the early this year for Gogo Kate Mandala, who was a lovely uh, 74-year-old grandmother who was lost around the Spring Mountain area. Um, they worked very closely with the police. The volunteers worked so hard over very hot conditions. Um, and they received an award for the search that they, they did. And I know this will probably bring up some memories for Gogo Kate's family, but the family and community really came together in doing a search, uh, letterbox dropping and so on. So I think it's really lovely that the efforts of those involved were recognised on Saturday afternoon. This particular item I'm about to talk about wasn't on the council meeting, but it ties in with the Ipswich Central Redevelopment Committee. Council's mm. actively promoting the availability of retail tenancies on Nicholas Street, and one of these promotions uh, centred around the retail property marketplace held in Sydney on the 14th. Council's Nicholas Street Precinct Director attended. What are you hoping for council to get out of this targeted event? Yeah, look, Nicholas Street Precinct is supported by a new leasing agency, um, Colliers, um, as well as the anchor tenant Hoyt Cinema, and it's a really unique opportunity for us to meet a lot of potential occupiers. Um, so the Marketplace, which is called the Retail Property Marketplace, is the country's premier leasing event. It attracts over 500 international, national, independent retail and leisure brands. So it's a, a great opportunity for us to work with um other um, outlets here in, in Ipswich that went down there together. So, look, we are leaving no stone unturned to get uh, the Nicholas Street Precinct fully leased. Also on the Ipswich Central Redevelopment Committee report at this month's council meeting, four leases were discussed. One of them was mm. a late item, lots of closed sessions. Firstly, can you just explain why those meetings have to be closed? Yes, under the Local Government Act, um, we're not allowed to um, discuss matters that could be detrimental to, I guess, for the residents and, and the commercial position of council. So it's a little bit different. You know, this council has inherited uh, these arrangements and we're fixing up the issues and, and turning the Nicholas Street Precinct into a wonderful place. But we are having some um, discussions on commercial terms and so we are prevented from doing that in open session which Alan you know my views on transparency it, it frustrates the hell out of me but um we have to make sure that we get the best return for the residents and rate pays of Ipswich so that's what we have to do it that way any idea of the timing of when you can announce who these tenancies are with council, before we do any of the decisions, we receive advice from uh, Knight uh, Frank. We receive uh, uh, financial modelling from Forbes Financial Modelling. Uh, we receive advice from Coins and Treasury Corp, so, as well as council as well. So we do this with the expertise of those who are in this market to make sure that we do get the best possible return. And the best thing could happen is that this is all leased and we get um, uh, rent and lease coming in, but also a great dynamic mix of tenants as well. So it's really important for us to make sure we get that, right, that tenancy right, as well as really good commercial terms. Under economic development, the council heard about visitation and tourism numbers. Now, a couple of years ago, I did ask council how these numbers were formulated. Some of the sample sizes back then were very small, but I understand now that council's got a better snapshot of what's happening. Yeah, really delighted. We do use the Australian Government's Tourism Research Australia. There is That is the, the standard that is used throughout the industry, so Council uh, uses that. But what's been really great to see the latest data provided by Tourism Research Australia shows that key visitation indicator strips which have returned or exceeded pre-COVID levels, and for the first time, total visitor expenditure has exceeded over $3 million in a year. So it's um, quite great. And what has been interesting is to see the overnight visitation has increased which is, um, I put that down to a combination of a couple of things. We've worked very closely with our city events team, uh, with um, industry and other events in Ipswich. We try to make sure our city events, such as Spark and others, are during a time when other events are not on. Um, there's no point holding large events when everything's already booked out. We also took last year a deliberate decision to do advertising for our big city events outside of Ipswich. So billboards, um, Google uh, and other um, advertising outside of Ipswich as well to attract more people to Ipswich. And that seems to be paying off. Mayor, there are six more ordinary council meetings scheduled. I know you might pop in a couple of extras if needed. Between now and March 2024, the local government election mid-March, are there any outstanding jobs on your mayoral to-do list? <laughs> um, there's always more to do, Alan. Uh, but if I go back to, I guess, at the beginning of the term, um, I have delivered on 
all of my election commitments, probably bar one. I did say that we do a forensic audit of the controlled entities, uh, but I think the people of know that I've done everything I can. I have uh, made the request to the Queensland Audit Office to do a full forensic audit. They have refused. Um, I have gone through the uh, Queensland Government Information Commissioner to publish uh, data, and that has been knocked back by the Queensland Government. And I've made sure that this council has, has been the most transparent council in Australia. And we've received two national awards for that level of transparency and accountability. So um, every single transaction I make in one of my expenses is there, as well as any contract the council enters into over $10,000 is published. So whereas the Local Government Act only requires that if it's un, over 200000 So I think um, I, we've delivered on all that. Um, and going forward, um, I'll be sort of coming forward with a few other things. I I guess COVID coming out is, has been something that's been a real um, challenge for our community as well as the hail storms and the floods. But we're a resilient lot in Ipswich and I'll continue to work really hard alongside the people of Ipswich to you know, keep making sure that we have sustainable growth and, um, and, and heal and work together. On to more community matters, uh, Mayor Harding. The Sports Awards finalists have been announced and I'll put a link in the show note uh, to those finalists. Congratulations to them. But there's still time to nominate for Ipswich's Australia Day Awards with nominations closing November 5. How important is, is it to get nominations? I think it's really important. Um, my experience has been with, with all the finalists. Um, they were surprised at their nomination. It's a way for our community to thank people who really do volunteer and work hard in our community. It means a lot to them, but also it means they're ambassadors for our community as well. So when they're out and about, they're great ambassadors for Ipswich and hopefully it motivates them to continue to work really hard um, and support our community. So thank you to those who've nominated people. And uh, yeah, we made sure too this year that we, um, we normally have only opened up the nominations for the Australia Day Awards for a couple of weeks. Uh, we've actually had it open since it's about um, March, April. So we've given that a longer time frame for people to nominate people as well. I think what happens sometimes is uh, neighbours think that the other neighbour is going to nominate a worthy person <laughs> and then they don't end up getting nominated. So, yeah, that's a, yeah. Good, that's a good idea. Yeah. The voluntary home buyback scheme, we talked about Get Ready Week just a little while ago, but each month there's more progress being made under the Resilient Homes Fund. What's the latest? Look, the Re- Resilient Homes Fund has been – such a beacon of hope for our community, and in particular the voluntary home buyback scheme, which will probably have in total about 250 to 300 homes in total when it's all finished. So it has been a lifeline. It's a very emotional journey for many people, but I want to thank the state and the federal governments. Is it is paid for 50-50 by them, and councils obviously um, enacting the, um, the the process. But um, the Queensland Reconstruction Authority people have been absolutely wonderful working with our community. Mayor Teresa Harding, we'll leave it there. Thanks for speaking with Ipswich today. Thank you very much, Alan. And a reminder to look for handy links in the show notes, including to the Ipswich Sports Awards finalists. Ipswich Today is supported by Kinetics, people-powered web hosting trusted by Australian businesses since 1999. This podcast is listener supported. Please make a once only gift or regular donation to help keep it online. Just go to ipswichtoday.com.au. Follow and stream this podcast from your favourite app, including iHeartRadio, or play Ipswich Today on smart speakers. Music is supplied by Purple Planet Music. This is Alan Roebuck. Thank you for listening.